Welcome everyone. This is um an exciting sports interview that I'm happy to conduct. And our special guest for today, we have Joey Mistretta. Joey, thank you for joining me today. Yeah, of course. Happy to be here. Great, great. Pleasure to have you. Um, so we gotta start from the beginning. Um, where were you raised? Where are you from? Yeah, so I'm originally from Southern California. It's a small town about two or so hours away from LA, east of LA. It's called Lake Arrowhead. Um, small mountain town. We get we get all four seasons. People think of California, they think, you know, beaches and city, but we're in the mountains up there. So it's a cool little city. And I lived there until really this past year. So did you grow up being a LA sports fan or were you outside of that? To an extent, like I, I really liked the Clippers uh, growing up, but I also did like the Mavericks, honestly. And uh, I loved watching, you know, Dirk and Jason Terry, all those guys. So it worked out where I am now. Nice, nice. When I started watching basketball, it was when it was the big three. It was Dirk, Steve Nash, and Michael Finley. And then, um, but obviously, you know, they had some impressive years, but him and Jason Terry, they ended up winning in 2011, which was one of the best um championship rooms that I've ever seen in my 25 plus years watching basketball so you attended Biola University um you studied broadcast journalism there will you say that was the beginning of your journalism career well yeah actually it's funny because in high school I obviously played I played baseball and basketball but I would also be like the PA announcer for some of the uh, girls games like if we had a game after them I would do some announcing for them. So that was the first time I kind of realized like the sports media thing was kind of cool. And then in college, I started out in business and I was going to go all in on business, but I, I'll be honest, I could not pass an accounting class to save my life. It was just terrible. So uh, I went ahead and made the switch to journalism. Um, I already had all my GEs done. So I'm a pretty good writer. So it was pretty uh, a seamless transition. And yeah, and that was really the professional start, I guess you could say. It's funny you mentioned accounting because recently, um, I mean, I'm almost done taking an accounting um, certification course. And yes, it's pretty challenging, but I want the challenge. You know, as a guy that, you know, wants to be an aspiring entrepreneur, it's important to know accounting, marketing, business strategy, and all of that. So, but I hear you, accounting is no joke, but it's essential to at least get familiar with it, especially if you want to go on the business route. Um, so during your time at Biola University, um, what, um, stories did you cover there? Or I should, yeah, what stories did you cover there? What story intrigued you? What paper? Or, because I know you did radio as well. So describe your experience there and tell me what were some stories that really, um, inspired you to write or to tell through radio? Well, that's cool. You mentioned the radio thing. That was, uh, that was my freshman year. And it was actually a buddy that I'd gone to high school with. Um, when I was a freshman, he was a senior. We actually played on the same basketball team in high school. And in college, he was doing this radio show, went to the same college randomly. And he was like, hey, do you want to be on the radio show with me? And I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? So we were kind of co-hosting a radio show. We were talking to some of the basketball players there. I think we had maybe a baseball player or two, um, a couple others as well. But that was more just my freshman year. And then... As I went on in college, I started doing the Chimes, C-H-I-M-E-S, newspaper at Viola, and they cover all the sports there. And I mostly covered baseball and basketball. I did some tennis as well, but I was kind of just a beat reporter, especially my senior year, a lot of baseball, a lot of basketball. And it kind of led me to what I'm doing now, because I'm honestly doing something similar now as a beat reporter for the Mavs and the Wings. So I, I really owe a lot of my success to the, that senior year where I was doing that. Nice, nice. So um, do you often follow tennis? Because I know there's the Wimbledon that happened recently, which is a big story. So how often, I'll say from one through 10, how would you rate in terms of your knowledge and follow a sport? Well, I, so I grew up playing baseball and basketball, but I did play some tennis as well. And I covered a little bit in college when they needed an extra reporter there. I was like, yeah, I'm, I, I can do it. I know, I know how to score and all that. I know some of the players. I'm not going to claim to be an expert or anything, but on a one to ten, I'd probably say 
right now, probably like a four or five. But there was a time where it was probably like a seven or an eight when I was younger. Okay, all right, all right. So, um, how was life after college? Because we know we've been there. We study something, we put in the work, we do internships, and sometimes it can get pretty scary and challenging. After you graduate, you get stuck in the limbo of okay, where do I go from here? So, do you face um that kind of situation? And if you did, um, then how long did it took you to um step out of that light? step out of that darkness well i think I, you know you're in the sports world you understand i think no matter what what year you graduate it's going to be tough to find something consistent out of college in sports and i graduated in the middle of the pandemic in 2020 so not only was it already tough but when you're going through that as well there's literally no sports happening it's going to be difficult so i just kind of stuck with it um i i did like an unpaid remote internship that summer just kept grinding and I ended up landing a, uh, what was it? It was like a baseball broadcasting gig. Didn't pay much, but it paid something. And I was broadcasting college baseball games the next summer. Um, it was like almost no attendance though. I'm sure you remember all that. Like there was like no fans. So it was just me and the players basically. And uh, there were times where I thought about quitting. Um, I almost went into insurance for a bit. I went in there for like a month and then real estate a little bit later. But I just kind of felt like I was just being called to, to sports, sports media. And I've always been a decent writer, like I said. So I wanted to stick with that. So after a lot of grinding, a few years in, um, I finally got the, uh, the job with Clutch Points, and that's led to where I am now. And that leads me to the following, um, clutch point, the Clutch Points. You've been there for two plus years now. You first started off as an associate editor, and now you're the beat reporter for Dallas Mavericks, um, a team that you root for, and the Dallas Wings. I'll be honest with you. I had no idea or recollection of who Dallas Wings are until I ran into your profile. So for us, the viewers will be watching this. Um, who are the Dallas Wings? Yeah, there's the WNBA team um, for, the, for Dallas. There's 12 teams, they're looking to expand. They're going to be expanding, I think, to San Francisco soon and another city. So WNBA is growing. It's a good time to follow the WNBA. But yeah, the Wings, they're just the team in Dallas. What are your thoughts on this upcoming season for the Dallas Mavericks? They added Klay Thompson, one of the greatest shooters of all time. Um, this is a team that just came, that just went to the NBA Finals. So what do you think um, – where do, uh, what do you think will happen with the Mavericks this upcoming season? Because it's a dicey situation. You don't know what version of Klay Thompson you're going to get. So what are your thoughts? Well, they're honestly ahead of schedule. I mean, this past year, nobody really thought they were going to make it as far as they did. And they made it all the way to the NBA Finals. So they're in a great spot. Um, I, I will admit, I, I, I don't like losing Derrick Jones Jr. He was such an impactful presence for them. But they got Najee Marshall. They get Quentin Grimes. They recently added Spencer Dinwiddie. So all those depth moves are huge. And then you bring in Clay. Whether Clay shoots 42% or he shoots 37% from deep, either way, he's going to attract no shortage of defensive presence. And that's only going to help everyone else on the floor because they have to double team Luka or Kyrie. But if you double team both of them, then Clay's open. If you double team one of them, then either Kyrie or Luka will be able to get a, get a bucket. You also have P.J. Washington, who can shoot a little bit. He can finish the basket as well. And then you look in the post, you got Lively or Gafford starting, either one of them. I just think Clay's presence, he's going to score. He's going to do his thing. But just his presence is going to help everybody on the team. The offense is going to be a lot better. Defensively, there will be some question marks. But I think Najee Marshall will help with that. Um, we'll see how Grimes does on that end of the floor. But if their defense can hold up, the offense is going to take care of the rest. So I want to go to the Clippers now because you did mention that um, um, the Clippers at the beginning of this interview. Yeah. It, it's been a, a roller coaster ride these last five years um, during the Kawhi Leonard era. Kawhi Leonard is my favorite player, and it's <laughs> torturing to see him constantly going through these injuries. Where do you, what do you think the Clippers should do with him? 
Um, because I they James Harden will be back. Paul George is a sixer now. If you're if you were sitting in the GM seat right now, how would you go about it? There's no right or wrong answer. This is just your opinion. Right. Well, honestly, I'd pray. I would just say, hey, I need you to be healthy. Because when he's on the floor, Kawhi Leonard, I get why he's your favorite player. He is so much fun to watch. He's great on both ends. But if he's not healthy, then you don't really have that other, you know, superstar player. I know James Harden's there. He's a really good player. He's not a superstar at this point in his career. And then the rest of the guys, like, they have some decent depth. Um, I like Zubach. I love the Jones edition. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would keep Kawhi this year. Um, hope he stays healthy. Try to build around Sam. And if it just doesn't work, maybe you press the re the rebuild button and start over. From a sports journalism standpoint, um, name me at least three to five names that you grew up that had a major influence on you in your career. That's a good question. I would say, well, growing up, you know, watching ESPN all the time, there was a broadcaster or an analyst named Stuart Scott. You may remember him. And um, yeah, I, yeah, exactly. I, I loved him. He was uh, so professional, but made it fun. I loved watching him. Um, recently, I got to talk to Chris Berman at the ESPYs, and that was incredible. Um, he gave me some great advice on just on journalism. And, um, and I, I got to give credit to my parents, too. Like, that's not the professional answer. But like, without my parents, I wouldn't be where I am. And they've always had my back. And then um, I guess the last one I'll say, going back to the, you know, sports media world is uh, Stephen A. Smith. People don't always like Stephen A. But he was a Sixers reporter before he went on TV. And that's kind of how he got his start. And for me, I'm a beat reporter right now for the Mavs. So I'm kind of following his footsteps. I don't know if I'm going to want to be on TV someday. If that opportunity presents itself, cool. If not, that's okay. But um, I will say Stephen A is like his path. I I don't have the personality of him, but uh, his path, I think, is something to follow for sure. So for now that you're a graduate, you know, you're out of college, you know, you're working for clutch points. What would you tell a college student right now? that starting um, his or her journalism career in college, what advice would you give them that you wish you could have give yourself, your younger self advice? What, would, what advice you would give them? Yeah, for sure, I would say experience. Um, I didn't really start doing the whole intern thing until a little later in my college career. And I should have just taken every opportunity because it kind of delayed my progress. So if you're in high school right now, or an early college student, like go get internships, do three or four internships while you're in college, um, work for your newspaper like I did, uh, write for websites. Like it's not all about working for the big companies nowadays. Like now you can get on these sites that are low paying, unpaid, but they get you experience. Um, there's so many routes, which is, which is great. Like it gives you more experience. Um, and I would also say like, don't expect to, get a full-time nine to five type gig out of college because this is an industry where it's all about grinding. Um, there's times where I've worked three or four jobs at once, just grinding. And you got to be willing to put in the work. And if you're willing to put in the work, you can go pretty far in the industry. I strongly agree with that. When I was in college, I was writing for the magazine, for the newspaper magazine, the school. That's how I got things started. And then I went through a couple of years struggling after college, but then um, I created my own blog. I'm a type of person that I don't wait for no one to give me the green light. I create my own opportunities, you know, put um, build my own portfolio, my own resume. And now, you know, being in my early 30s, I'm working for two different companies that it's unpaid, but it's the experience that counts. That's what people need to always keep in mind. It's not always about getting paid and this and that. Those things will come, but you need, you know, something to have on your resume. So anybody who's listening, we can't stress it enough. If you're in college, write for the school magazine, newspaper, um, take advantage of internships and just never stop, never quit. You know, it doesn't matter how young or how old you are, just never quit keep going and someday 
there will be a light at the end of the tunnel. All of that will pay off. So great advice, great advice. So my last question for you, Joey, where can we follow you and your work? Yeah, I mean, on Clutch Points, go to the Clutch Points website. You'll see my author profile um, on social media, on Twitter, or X, whatever you call it, uh, Joey Mistretta underscore. On Instagram, it's just Joey underscore Mistretta 24. On Instagram, I post a lot of like my videos. Um, I'll post some articles on there too as well. But yeah, I'd say IG and Twitter are mostly where I'm at. Well, there you have it. Um, Joey, thank you so much for joining um, this interview. Um, just in, um, incredible, fantastic to learn about you, your journey and where you are right now. And, you know, the fact that, you know, you're going around covering games, traveling, I mean, that's the dream, you know, um, wake up every day doing what you love. So I'm happy for you, man. And just continue to keep growing, keep, um, keep grinding and, you know, sky's the limit for you. Let's see where we go from there. If you want to stick to writing, I don't blame you for that. But if opportunity presents itself where you're going to podcasting or TV, even much better. But, um. Keep working and continue to improve on your craft. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it.